my name is Robin. I'm a native of Albuquerque. I've lived in New Mexico all of my life. Three years ago, at the age of 53, my husband was diagnosed with younger onset Alzheimer's disease. Um, as you can imagine, it was a very devastating diagnosis. And for the both of us, we were grappling with different emotions. I'm a private person. Um, I'm very contemplative. I'm very, um, I guess there's a part of me that has a lot of pride and um, there's a big part of me that always feels like I can handle things on my own. In this case, it was probably one of the biggest obstacles, I suppose, or um, issues that I've had to deal with in my entire life. And I, I kind of realized with some inner reflection that I needed to um, seek help. You have to be convinced that that's what that there is a real problem, and part of part of the acceptance um, and the adjustment is is going and starting to talk to people. David, on the other hand, um, jumped in feet first by becoming an advocate at the local association of the Alzheimer's. It was just nice to know and get in front of people that are professionals and can help at the Alzheimer's Association. I became aware of the Alzheimer's chapter's offering of a savvy caregiver program. And um, I finally decided to sign up for it. And it's a seven to eight week course that the Alzheimer's Association offers. What we have to do first is we all have to be on the same page about what dementia is. The idea is to give family caregivers um, a better understanding of Alzheimer's disease and related dementias, to understand the progression of the disease, what that's going to look like so they can plan um, and be better prepared, um, give them strategies and tools for addressing and, and coping with some of the more difficult behaviors that come with the disease. To be an effective caregiver, you have to have both the emotional acceptance and wisdom as well as the actual, if you will, academic knowledge of what's going on in the brain and how is it going to be expressed. When I got there I recognized that so many of us were grappling with the same emotions. The fear, the concern, the sadness, the long-termness of the disease, um, the inevitability of the loss of that loved one and the impact it had on, on our lives. So I guess really our current issues are just um, trying to, you know, to see what it is and where we go. I mean, we just feel like it's day to day. And I hope that I can learn more about how to take care of it. It's becoming very stressful for her, so I'd like to find ways to help her. I want to know how to make the days with my mother, the re remaining days with my mother, the best they can be. It gave me a strong sense of bonding, of camaraderie, and it gave me a tremendous amount of solace and comfort in knowing that others were, again, experiencing the same situation. When people start to accept that they're taking care of somebody with a progressive disease, and they start to have more realistic expectations of what they can do uh, as a caregiver, um, we see things really kind of take off because their whole approach to caregiving at that point changes.
I have to really admire the Esquivels. Um, they initially, I think, were stunned by the thought that the illness could strike somebody so young as David. But after they have, again, come to that level of acceptance, they have, oh, they've, they've got that illness by the tail, I tell you. They have um, gotten all the information um, that they can. Um, they have embraced uh, the journey and have um, really done an, an outstanding job. Unequivocally, absolutely, if you have any doubts about going or signing up for this class, you must go because you will have no idea how at ease it will put your soul. Your savvy, savvy uh, booklet, yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, we, so that's by the bed of our, uh, in, in our bedroom, so. Mm -hmm.